Hi, I'm Michael, and this is Maker's Workshop. Today, we're going to talk about materials, and we're going to take a simplistic CNC design, and we're going to make it five different ways to see how different we can make it by just slightly changing what we're carving it out of. I think this will be a fun little experiment. Let's get started. I had a sizable chunk of maple left over from a previous project. I squared it off on the bandsaw and then split it into sections to make up the bulk of this first glue up. To add color, I grabbed a thin panel of babinga. It happened to be the same width as the maple, which made it easy to cut into strips and slip into place. It looked pretty good as is, but I thought I'd add another color and cut some strips of wenge to layer into the glue up. Then I lined my surface with wax paper and got myself some Type On 3 so I could get gluing. I lined my strips up in the order that I wanted them and then started applying a liberal coat of glue to the top of each strip using a foam brush. Foam brushes are my go-to because I find they give the cleanest application with no bristle fallout and so on. I stacked everything together and got some clamps onto this thing. This was going to need to dry overnight, so I figured I'd do a couple more glue ups to throw into the mix using some more scraps. I thought it was worth giving plain old plywood a shot on this and cut some into squares to layer together for a second glue up. I also had some walnut plywood left over from the dresser I made in the springtime. It has a really unique coloring to it, so I stacked up three squares of that for a glue up to make into a candle holder as well. All right, we're gonna let these sit overnight and then tomorrow we will carve. After throwing a chunk of red oak and an end cut from a resin river table into the mix, the next morning, I had a pretty interesting range of materials to experiment with. So the point of this is to do a simple design and have the materials be different enough from each other that that's the thing that makes it different. So I didn't put too much thought into the materials that I picked. I just kind of went through, found different pieces of scrap, glued them together in ways that look different from each other. And now we're gonna do up the design and see what we get. All right, so this is not gonna be a complicated design. We're just going to make a square, put a circle in it and call it a day. This design is simple, so designing it right in easel was no problem. I first made a square, and then made a smaller circle to be hollowed out and aligned it perfectly to the center of the square. This is where the pillar candle will rest. I don't really know how big pillar candles are, but I'm just gonna guess. I made sure I had my settings in properly for my first block, before getting my machine loaded up and ready. All right. The plywood block was a natural starting point. It was the block of wood that I was the least excited about. If all crashed and burned, I wouldn't really care. So now we're gonna go ahead and change the bit and we're gonna put a V bit on it and we're gonna do that so that we can put a slight edge on the piece, a little bit of a taper so that it will give it, I think it'll give it a little bit of a richer look. This is a 60 degree V bit and I set my machine to run along the exterior and interior to add a bevel to both shapes. To get it to line up properly, it is important to set your design to cut directly on the outline of both shapes, not inside or outside. And now I'm gonna start running the other blocks through the machine. It's pretty hands-off at this point. That's the beauty of the CNC. So we'll see what we have when they're done. I went ahead and loaded the original glue up into the machine and started that carve. To save the time it would take to switch bits, I started this one off with the V-bit carve first. One thing that I didn't think about when I was doing the glue up for the glue up board is we put wenge in there, which is a very hard wood. You need to carve 
at the speed of the hardest wood. Otherwise, your bit will jump every time you hit it. So in the future, if I was to do this again and wanted a similar look, I would probably go with a walnut because that would maintain the same speed of the carve and not change the production time in a huge way. So it took the carve and it changed it from a one hour and 44 minute carve to a 12 hour carve. You win some, you lose some. It'll still look great. It's just gonna take a little longer than we thought. It was pretty smooth sailing from here in the CNC router. I cycled my five wood blocks on the machine and enjoyed watching the pieces take shape. Instead of carving all the way down through the wood on these, I had the CNC router go only halfway. Once the machine etches a perfect square, it's so much quicker to handle the full cut with a bandsaw. The first pass, all I did was take off the bulk of it, but I left a decent lip. So now I'm just going to shave it down one more time to minimize my sanding. Then, all I needed to do was cycle each piece through the bandsaw and watch them take shape. I hit the edges with the belt sander afterwards, just to get as seamless an edge as possible on them. And then finished everything off with a quick hand sand. So at the moment, my two favorites are the resin piece and the pattern block but they all are coming out pretty good. Even the ones that I didn't think were gonna be looking great are coming out pretty good, like the plain plywood. And then we have the walnut one, which has just kind of an interesting stark contrast between the plywood and the veneer. And the solid oak. It's pretty straightforward, very simplistic, but it's not bad. But I do think that some of these give a interesting comparison about how just a little bit of a change in your material choice can really impact the finished piece. To finish these, I'm just gonna dip them in mineral oil and call it a day. One of the best things I ever did for the shop was finally getting a big bucket for my mineral oil. It makes finishing so much quicker. Popping each of these in oil was an exciting last step in seeing their colors come to life. The resin and the babinga in particular really stood out to me. I'm gonna let these sit overnight and then tomorrow they're done. I did not actually measure for the candles, so let's see if they fit. They fit. All in all, I think that this project was a success. We have five different pieces here, all done with a very simplistic CNC file, and they all look very different from each other. We have the basic line that is just the stacked plywood, which honestly came out better than I thought it was going to. I thought I was gonna hate this one, but it's not bad. It, it has a little bit of interest because it has the lines from the plywood layers, and um, it's echoed again on the inside. Um, it's not my pick, but I can see how some people would really like this look. 
uh, we have the solid oak as what I would consider the next level up. And again, not really my pick, it's a little plain, but some people very much like just plain wood. And I could see this one as something that some people would pick as well as their favorite. And because it's oak, it has a nice red color to it and it really deepened up with the mineral oil. So again, not my pick, but it is really nice looking. And then we have the walnut plywood, which is the same basic concept as the plain plywood, but just has the added component of having the nice veneer on a couple of sides. It really took the basic plywood look and I think added a level of richness to it. The one downside is, is since we didn't use the CNC to cut all the way through, we did get a little bit of tear out on the bottom, actually quite a bit of tear out on the bottom, which makes it the bottom doesn't look all that nice. Um, so like for my table, it'd be fine, but if I wanted to sell this, I would need to put a piece of felt on the bottom or dress it up a little bit. Or, you know, maybe when trimming it, might want to try putting a little painter's tape down before running the bandsaw through it, or possibly even cut it from the other direction to minimize the tear out. All right, and then that brings us to my two personal favorites. We have the pattern block, which I think just has a really nice richness to it. Um, the darker bands of color just really, to me, add something to the lighter maple. And again, with the mineral oil, it just got this nice sheen to it. And it's just, you know, to me, very nice looking. And same thing with the resin cutoff that we had. It just has a very different look to it. And I think it's really quite striking and interesting. All right, so the basic gist is, is that even with a simple CNC file, the materials can make a huge difference in your project. And this is the exact same project, and we have five pieces that look very different from each other. Uh, and it also illustrates that you can do projects in any number of costs. I used all scrap, but if I was buying the wood for this, uh, we have a range of price points here, ranging from the plywood to the exotic woods and the resin. If you like this video, go ahead and click subscribe, click the notification bell, and I'll see you next time.